Friends, welcome to video 8B, Equity, Liability and Assets. I hope you had a chance to look at video 8 as well as video 8A. In video 8, I have already explained all the 7 important concepts which, if mastered, can help us to understand accounting data, financial statements very, very easily. Video 8A gave an example of a vegetable vendor, how from simple transactions, we can easily understand all these seven concepts. I hope you are already familiar with both those videos. So in this video, I thought I'll just elaborate a little bit more on these three concepts, equity, liability and assets. So welcome. Equity, as we discussed in one of the earlier videos, it's actually the contribution of shareholders to business. That of course is in a company form because the concept of shareholders is relevant in the world of companies. In case of a partnership, equity would signify the money put in by the partners. In case of a proprietary organization, equity would mean money which is put in by uh, the proprietor himself or herself. Now what happens friends is once this equity is put into action, business starts growing, it starts making profits, these accumulated profits also keep on adding to equity. To the extent the profits are distributed back to shareholders, of course the equity goes down, but to the extent the profits are undistributed, they keep on adding to equity. You may remember in that example of the vegetable vendor, we saw how the equity at the end of the day was more than the equity at the beginning of the day because of the profits that the vegetable vendor made during the day. Friends, equity is also called as risk capital. Shareholders are the prime risk takers in any business. It's only because shareholders take risk that lenders, vendors, employees, customers are willing to take risk. Now, of course, I'm going to elaborate on this concept of equity even a little more and we will even see how different types of corporate actions are taken, for example, you may have heard about concept of bonus shares, split of shares, consolidation of shares, rights issue, all that we will be discussing in greater detail later on. But for now, in the world of companies, typically equity consists of two important items. One, which is called a share capital. In fact, share capital is derived simply from the number of shares which have been issued multiplied by face value. Friends, I am going to make a separate video on this concept of face value, why this face value is useful. But for now, just remember that share capital is simply the number of shares which have been issued by the company multiplied by the face value. A standard denominator is what face value is. But I will cover that in greater detail in a separate video. But as I mentioned earlier on this slide itself, there is the concept of retained earnings. Retained earnings simply means undistributed profits. In India, we also call them as reserves and surplus. In addition, when company shares are issued to the public, the price at which the shares are issued quite often is much more than the face value. Of course, I am going to deal with this logic of this extra amount which is charged, which is called a share premium. What is the logic of that? What is the basis on which that is derived? All that again, I'll cover through a separate video. But for now, please remember that whatever is, is this extra premium, which is paid over and above the face value by the shareholders also keeps on adding to equity. For now, I think that should be sufficient. Just remember that. Let's move on. Friends, as I mentioned in the last slide, the equity includes not only share capital, but retained earnings. Let's just talk a little bit more about retained earnings. Retained earnings actually are a result of the profit of the company that it makes year after year. Please remember that company is a legal entity formed on behalf of the shareholders and naturally the profits of the company indirectly belong to shareholders. But as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, there is this concept of limited liability, but 
limited rights too. The shareholders don't have the right to interfere in the board's decision of how much dividend can be declared. It is completely at the discretion of the board of directors. So whatever dividend is paid out of the profits, the rest is retained within the company and that's how retained earnings are created. These retained earnings don't sit idle as cash in bank accounts. It is rather invested in growing the business. Now some of these concepts I'm going to deal with in greater detail with a lot of illustrations in a later video. But for now, just remember that retained earnings are a result of. Friends, let's now talk a little bit about the concept of liabilities. In fact, we are already familiar with that concept. It simply means whatever the company owes to others. Now, who are the people who could have claim on the company? In other words, who are the people to whom the company owes money? It could be lenders. It could be vendors for the bills which are not yet paid, employees for the salary which is yet not uh, disbursed, government for the taxes which remain unpaid, customers for the advances that they may have given to us but we have not yet fulfilled the orders. Now on the next slide, let's quickly get familiar with the two broad categories in which liability Friends, uh, liabilities can be categorized in two broad categories, non-current liability and current liability. Non-current liability simply means all those liabilities which fall due for payment beyond next 12 months. So typically all our long-term loans, dues to employees which are going to mature in the long term such as gratuity, unutilized leave, they are all examples of non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are all those which arise on account of different indirect sources of finance. You may remember we had a separate video on that. So all the dues to vendors, to employees, to contractors, even to customers who have given us advances but we have not fulfilled the orders, unpaid taxes are all these examples of current liability. Similarly, there could be examples of money which is borrowed for the short term uh, or there could be long term loans but a part of that is going to fall due in the next 12 months just like we may have a long-term housing loan, but we have EMIs which are going to fall due in the next 12 months, about which we are always concerned about. The reason why liabilities are classified into two brackets is financial managers have to be always concerned about all the liabilities, all the obligations which are going to fall due in relatively short period because they need to organize money. Assets simply mean those which a company owns, they could be broadly three categories. You may remember we had a separate discussion through a video about how different resources such as tangible, intangible, financial or monetary resources could be acquired. And we at that time also discussed this that only those resources which are owned by the organization can be called as assets. And resources which are hired or licensed cannot be called as assets. You would remember that. So just as the liabilities are classified into non-current that is long term and current which is short term, assets can also be classified in the same way. Non-current assets, those assets where our intent is to hold them for a long period of time, maybe more than one year, that's the intention. So typically all our infrastructure such as property, plant, equipment, all the long term investments, all the long term loans and advances given to different stakeholders will fall in this category and current assets are those which are short term, they are a part of the money cycle. You would remember in uh, one of our early videos, video 2, we talked about the cycle of money. So everything which is part of that money cycle, operating cycle, such as inventory of raw materials, work in process, finished goods, receivables, which means money due from customers, cash and bank balances, short term investments, short term loans and advances, such as festival advances given to employees are all examples of current assets. Friends, I hope this video gave you more clarity on the concepts of equity, liabilities and assets and how they could be classified. I indeed look forward to your continued participation. Do press the uh, subscribe button so that you will be notified about more videos that are coming up. Thank you and take care.